Stand by to initiate release sequencer. On my mark. Five. We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. Hello everyone, my name is Mark, a.k.a. Derringer. Today is Sunday, September 17th, and you are listening to episode 123 of the Instant Action Podcast, your weekly source for Planetside 2 news and information. As always, I'm brought to you by great listeners like you via the Support the Show tab on instantactionpodcast.com. First off, if you can't tell by my voice, I am sick as a dog. There is a nasty head cold going around my family, uh, my immediate family, and then my parents and brother and shit like that all have a stomach flu on top of all that. So uh, uh, I will do this podcast today for as long as my voice allows it. Right now my throat feels like there are 15 sheep in there scrabbling to escape and it hurts just to talk. So again, if this week's show is a little shorter than the others, I apologize for that and I'll make up for it as soon as I feel a little bit better. So what have I been doing this past week? Well, I did play some Planet Side 2, I'll tell you that. Uh, I actually had a real good time playing this past Friday with Recursion during the Emerald Friday Night Fights. Um, they're always a, a competent opponent to play against, and I really enjoyed playing with them as well, uh, seeing what they, what they do, how they play, and, and, and things like that. R- really, really good time, I do have to say. And then this weekend, I've been traveling Massachusetts with my daughter and my wife because my daughter is beginning to look at colleges. She is a senior in high school this year, and we were at UMass Amherst on Saturday. If anybody knows Massachusetts, that's one of the larger public schools within the state, and uh, we had a good time over there. So other than that, like I said, sickness, I've been sleeping an awful lot. Uh, So let's see what is actually in store for this week's show. Well, first, like I said, as long as my voice allows, there's a PTS update to talk about next, an update to Iridar's toolbox I want to talk about, followed by a YouTube post by Sirius Gaming that asks the question of whether implants are saving Planet Side 2 or not. And last but not least, I want to finish the show by boarding the drama train on Emerald. So strap in as we hot drop into another episode of the Instant Action Podcast. Like I said, first up, the September 14th PTS update. And again, PTS updates are only for the PC side of the game. Sorry, PS4 folks. Uh, And starting off, just a reminder that these uh, patch notes continue to build off of the critical mass update and the combined arms initiative that has been discussed in all the previous notes and dev articles that have been released by Daybreak Games. So first off, we're going to talk a little bit about Meta, where they added some additional polish and improvement to the faction point drop-down of the, um, you know, the main screen when you're actually looking at the alert that's going on itself. Uh, They also disabled all the old continent alerts on the PTS. Now the only alert that can ever kick off on PTS uh, is a critical mass alert. And they're also currently working on making the territory scoring statistics updates more quickly on the main map header. They also enabled the population controls on the PTS. As I talked about last week, those had not been enabled for the for the uh, test that they had done. Uh, So those are added now. So now the highest populated faction is now balanced against the runner up instead of the lowest population populated faction. Uh, and overpopulated factions will funnel players into virtual reality instead, where they can queue up for a slot on an actually active content, continent. Uh, the faction queue only activates when there are more than 75 players on continent uh, and more than 150 players on all continents combined. Next, they added some infantry adjustments. First is to Nanoweave Armor. Uh, They removed the Archer Resist-type benefit because that Resist-type no longer exists. Uh, 
Uh, they also changed rank 5, so it reduces non-headshot melee damage by 20%. Uh, and rank 5 Nanoweave's armor targets now show a resist icon upon impact as a result. The safeguard implant got some changes as well. The rank 5 benefit now instantly restores 200 shield health upon being revived as infantry, or 500 health upon being revived as a max unit instead of reducing melee damage like it did originally. Next, we had some weapon changes, and this is to the underbarrel grenade and smoke launcher. They both had their direct damage reduced. The uh, grenade launcher had its direct damage reduced to 500. It was previously 800. And the smoke launcher got its direct damage reduced to 250. It was also previously 800. Next, the nano repair grenade. This was something that someone had requested on Reddit asking if we could get them to stick to ger generators and terminals now. And uh, I believe Rel said, you know, that's a good idea, easy enough to do. So now on the PTS, repair grenades are going to stick to generators and terminals if you throw them at them. Uh, the pilot and the daimyo got some minor audio and firing audio adjustments, nothing major or nothing important to the weapons themselves. But next, we're going to talk about some max changes, because these are some actually bigger changes to the game itself. And really, the changes are just to the different armors that maxes can equip. First up, kinetic armor. We all know what that is as it's in its current state. On the PTS, it now reduces different resist types by 20% based on the rank, and this is similar to how nanoweave armor works itself. So if you are running rank 1 kinetic armor on the max, you're going to reduce small arms damage by 20%. If you are running rank 2, it's also going to reduce heavy machine gun damage by 20% in addition to the small arms damage. Rank 3 is going to add gatling damage by 20% in addition to small arms and heavy machine gun. Rank 4 is going to add soft point machine gun damage by 20% in addition to the other three. And if you're running rank 5, the max rank of kinetic armor, it's going to reduce small arms, heavy machine gun, gatling, soft point machine guns, and melee damage all by 20%. Uh, so not too bad to be running kinetic armor now. Flak armor is being renamed altogether. It's going to be renamed ordnance armor. And it is also going to reduce different resist type based on rank instead of increasing resistant percentage at each rank itself. So if you're running rank 1 of the new ordnance armor, rank 1 is going to reduce common explosion damage by 50%. Rank 2 is going to reduce infantry rocket damage by 20% in addition to the common explosion damage. Rank 3 is going to reduce C4 damage by 50% and infantry rocket damage by 20% in addition to common explosion and also tank mine damage is only going is going to be reduced by 50%. Uh so really rank 3 is going to be where a lot of people actually need to go to for using ordnance armor because again it's going to reduce common explosion tank mines and C4 by half uh, and infantry rocket damage by 20 and that's pretty much uh, a, a sweet spot for that. Uh, of course, a lot of people are going to keep going because if you go to rank 4, in addition to all those, it's going to reduce tank shell damage by 20%, which isn't too bad, honestly. Uh, and rank 5, it's going to reduce all those other things, but it's also going to add light anti-vehicle and air-to-ground explosive damage all are going to be reduced by 20%. So, again, if you cap out at rank 5, just to reiterate... Common explosions, tank mines, C4 damage, all reduced by 50%. Infantry rocket, tank shells, light AV, and air-to-ground explosive damage is all reduced by 20%. Uh, I can see myself running this new ordnance armor a lot. I mean, yes, uh, the... The uh, kinetic armor is not too bad if you're breaching rooms and things like that. Uh, but I, see, I, I tend to find that I die most often by tank mines or C4 rather than the small arms and stuff like that. So I think I may be looking at an ordnance armor myself. Moving along, there were a bunch of vehicle resistances that were streamlined. Uh, the devs want people to report any standout irregularities. Um, I'm not going to go into all the various resist types, but I mean, we're talking the Ant Sunder, ESF's Valkyrie Deliberator Galaxy, 
Uh, all of them had some of their Gatling gun, tank cannon, light AV, etc., heavy machine gun uh, resistances changed. Next, vehicle, other vehicle adjustment. Uh, specific, specifically for the Marauder, uh, and this is on the Harasser and the Prowler for the TR, uh, they reverted the sound effect so it now sounds more like a Fury with some minor modifications. I know, big whoop. Uh, spear Phalanx turrets got some changes as well. The VS1s in particular should now show teal tracers in first and third person. The TR Phalanx turrets and also Lightning and Prowler main cannon should now show red tracers in first and third person. NC got no change because it's already blue. Uh, as for ants, we got some good changes to the ants or, or some I- interesting changes to the ants. Uh, they had their default cordium storage capacity increased. It was it's now up to 8,000 from 5,000. The cordium storage cert line now increases storage capacity a further a thousand up to two thousand at its max rank. The cordium shield now increases the armor of the vehicle by twenty percent on all sides except for the bottom, and this is instead of draining cordium draining cordium on damage taken. The cordium shield now has a two hundred cordium activation cost, and it now does stack with reinforced armor and mine guard. Uh, and they also added a speculative fix to spot check showing above cloaked ants. I know there were a number of videos added to Reddit recently that showed uh, even though an ant might cloak itself, you'd still, if it was spotted before it cloaked, you would still see the actual faction color and, and name uh, even though the ant was cloaked itself. And that sucked if you were... Uh, any ant driver using the, uh, the using the cloaking system on their ants and still getting tracked down and killed. So good to see that speculative fix pushed out. They also made some changes to the Liberator, and the notes on this is that they're making these changes so the Liberator moves toward a more survivable air support platform. But in addition to that, they're reducing the vehicle's burst damage. Uh, I don't think that Liberator pilots are going to be happy with any of these changes. Um, but uh, I think the devs at this point are reluctant to make the Liberator any more powerful than they think it already is. I, I know the Liberator is a high-skill platform, especially with the Dalton. The Dalton seems to be where the majority of the complaints are. Uh, so let's talk about these additional changes that just came to PTS. So all nose guns are now able to pivot while aiming down sights. Unfortunately, that feature is not going to be available on the PS4. But they also increased the bottom armor from 0% to 50%. Uh, The tank buster had some damage range increases. The vector also had some damage range increases at all ranges. Uh, The spur had some as well. Uh, In addition, it had its blast range damage increased a bit. Uh, And then we had a bunch of miscellaneous changes and additions on the PTS itself. Uh, They increased the brightness of Amherst's darkest hours. Um, resist shield now uses the correct duration it was only an issue on the PTS but they fixed it there anyway so that shouldn't come to live Uh, the rank 5 safe fall implant now uses a more accurate description the uh, warp gate terminal at the end of the tutorial should no longer crash the client this was a big issue a lot of people weren't able to get through the tutorial because they'd go to use the, the terminal at the end and it would crash uh, they also fixed some issues with NS Optics not being completely covered in camo. The Amaterasu, which is the knife, the NSX weapon, uh, can now be trialed. It was in some sort of state where it wasn't able to be trialed before. Uh, they fixed the Biolab dome, so they were going to render the full dome at much longer distances, which should help stop people from being able to shoot through them. Uh, And then the biggest one is that they reduce the camera shake area of effect in intensity on a handful of explosion types. Um, This was something that Rel Rel had said that uh, camera shake really didn't affect the game whatsoever, and it seems like they're backtracking on this. Um, I think most people, once they receive the Battle Hardened implant, that's one of the only implants they used, and clearly... Re- moving off of this camera shake effect is going to push people away from using Battle Hardened, and I think that's probably the main reason we saw uh, this particular change come through. But that's the PTS update in a nutshell. 
Uh, again, this is all stuff that's added on top of the critical mass stuff and the combined arms initiative stuff. Uh, in addition to this, there was supposed to be a PTS play test this past week. It was supposed to happen on Friday. It got canceled because of some issues. We're going to look forward to a PTS play test uh, on this coming week. So again, watch Twitter for it. Watch Reddit for it. That's where you'll see all the information regarding it. And with that, let's move on to our next topic this week. So second up this week, I wanted to give a shout out to Iridar. It seems like I talk about him a lot on this show, but it's because he continues to produce a lot of excellent things. Uh, he had an update done to his toolbox this particular week. And if you're not familiar with his toolbox, it's basically a macro enabled Excel spreadsheet, which allows you to figure out how many hits it's going to take to kill things and uh, vehicles, stuff like that, or depending on what... Uh, what loadouts that they have and things like that. Uh, he had a, an update to it, which he said is far from for, from perfect. There are a number of issues, uh, but he did update it and added a whole bunch of stuff to it. It's a very streamlined program. If you were ever curious as to how many uh, you know fracture shots it takes a TR Max to kill a uh, a lightning that has front armor on it, you can use this toolbox and figure that information out. If you wanted to know how many shots it would take to kill a galaxy with any type of armor on it or no armor at all, uh, you can use this tool and then you can go right to the VR, you know, virtual reality in game and test it and see that the information is 100% correct. Uh, clearly, Iridar's put a lot of work into this because it uh, isn't it, it looks good and it works well. It does what it's supposed to do. Uh, I mean, every week I see somebody asking the question, how many, how long does it take to do X or what, what do I need to do to do Y? And a lot of those questions could be answered by using the toolbox that he provides this download. Um, it's good information. Uh, I, I, like I said, I seem to talk about Iridar a lot on this show, but while he continues to put out good tools like this i'll continue to talk about him and send people over to his website uh it's iridar.net slash toolbox and that's where you can get all the information you need uh like i said if if you've ever were ever curious how many shots with what weapon it's going to take to do what this is where you can go and find that information without really needing to to log into the game and and check it out uh definitely a good additional thing that he's added to the game All right, let's do topic number three as I'm, I feel my voice slowly going. Uh, this was a YouTube post put out by Serious Gaming, another person I seem to talk about a lot on the, this show. Uh, but he was asking the question, are implants saving Planetside 2? And he put together a YouTube video. And basically he is illustrating the point that because Daybreak Games seems to be... Uh, in a hiring mode right now where they're looking to add new people to the team that his opinion is that implants unlike construction are something that is breathing a little bit of life back into planet side two as a monetization issue or thing i guess issue is the wrong word but he talks about people going for specific implants spending daybreak cash on those implants to get them uh, and things like that, and and even more so, people burning through their giant stockpiles of certs just to get the implants that they didn't have, which once everybody, it, he he's his point that he's trying to illustrate is that a you've got a you've got a couple groups of people, and some of them are the whales that are going to go out and need all the things you know all the implants immediately on their character, and they're going to buy daybreak cash and they're going to spend daybreak cash to do it. Then there's the free players who uh, think the implants are shit and they're leaving the game anyways. But then there's a third group of players who are veterans sitting on a large stockpile uh, of certs and are willing to dump the majority of those certs into the into 
PlanetSide 2 to try and unlock as many of the implants as they can. And then it feels like, and this is something that Drax, that he, he listed, he uh, pointed out something that Drax had said, uh, that once people burn through all these types of certs, then Daybreak Games announces that they're going to start releasing some Empire-specific weapons again, or new weapons. And as a result, those people that in the past would spend certs on them now possibly don't have the certs anymore, and therefore they're going to be spending more Daybreak cash to unlock these weapons and things like that. So, uh, again, he... Had, he he asks and also answers the question, and, and I tend to agree that I do think the implant system, even though it's a loot box system and that not everybody likes it, that I do think it has injected a bit of life back into Planet Side 2 that was missing uh, at a monetization level. So we can all sit back and complain about implants till we're blue in the face if you want to. Uh, it does seem that they're they're helping keep Planet Side Two afloat at this particular juncture juncture of the game, uh, and clearly people are taking notice uh, higher up in Daybreak Games because they're starting to hire additional people and things like that. I mean, the UI developer uh, job has been out there for a long time, but there are certainly a bunch of other positions that have opened up recently. Uh, you see them on advertised on Twitter. You see they have a job fair, or things like that. So. Um, I thought this was an excellent video put out by Serious Gaming, and it asked an interesting question that I really hadn't thought of too much. So I'm going to include a link to this video. I would recommend you go out and watch it, listen to the whole thing. Uh, there's some good insight in there, and uh, I, I tend to agree with what he said about implants within Planet Side 2. Uh, again, it's not a long video. It doesn't take too, too much of your time. I would definitely recommend going out and checking it out. Uh, when that, let's move on to our last topic before I lose my voice here and, and talk about some real drama in this game. So I'm sure by now most people have been on Reddit and have seen the Reddit post about Recursion banning a player from the RTST. Uh, that's the Recursion Stat Tracker. Uh, because that player owned the recursion tag in game, and so let's—I'm well, not even going to name yeah. names in this because I don't even think I need to. Because I think the person who used the recursion tag, even though it's not the real recursion tag, the tag was the zero O tag, and I, I mean we know recursion is using the O O or the zero zero tag for the most part when they're playing in game. And this particular person somehow got the zero O tag and created a one man outfit with the name, looks like he called it Zerg Surfers Unite. Uh, and then when he was approached by people in recursion and asked uh, to give the tag to them so that they could use it for an alt faction uh, within recursion itself, uh, the, per the player said no. And as a reaction to that, the uh, folks over at Recursion banned his account from using the stat tracker. Um, I think the player who was using the zero O tag, calling it Zerg Surfers Unite, uh, and then refusing to give them the tag, because clearly if this person were to capture a base and it would have something that looked like Recursion on it and it said Zerg Surfers Unite, it's just kind of stirring the pot. Uh, I think this person got what he f he friggin' deserved. I mean, don't be a dick, and people won't be dicks back to you. I mean, you you were clearly looking to cause drama for this, and then you went on to Reddit and posted about it, and you wonder why you're getting shit on on Reddit as well, because cause you're a complete asshole on this. Recursion's 100% right in this particular instance. If they don't, they it's their stat tracker. You know, it, if they don't want somebody using their stat tracker, that's their decision. You know, no one needs to use their stat tracker when playing Planet Side 2. You know, it's not a requirement to play the game. Uh, they're paying for the server that everything's being run on. You're not paying for it. I'm sure this person has donated zero to Recursion uh, in all this time to keep their stat tracker running. But... It all comes down to don't be an asshole and people won't be assholes back to you. I think Recursion is 100% in their rights 
uh, to do this to this particular player. And I'm glad, actually, that they stepped up and did this to this person. I mean, you, it's it's about time that assholery got treated as it you know as it's supposed to. You know, uh, I I have all the respect in the world for Exploding Fist. He's uh, the guy who runs, who created and runs the Stat Tracker. Um, the Stat Tracker is amazing. It's an awesome piece of software. The stuff that they're able to do with it is 100% great. It, it's awesome. So I am thankful every day that I can use this free piece of software to play Planet Side 2 with to enhance my game. It doesn't make me a better player uh, or, or anything like that. And again, it's free software. He's giving it to us for free. It's his prerogative to let anyone he wants use it or, in this case, not use it. Again, to the fuckwad who took the O zero tag, the zero O tag, and then gave it a shitty name to shit on recursion, and then uh, got pissy and whiny because he got banned from the RTS team. You got exactly what you deserved in this end of story. And with that, let's move on to housekeeping this week. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Come back later, please. Housekeeping. Not now. Housekeeping. Go away. I coming anyway. Unfortunately, I don't have any emails or voicemails or stuff like that to talk about this week. And it's probably a good thing because I feel like my voice is going to go any second now. So let's just talk about how you can get in touch with me or the show. So as always, you can visit my website, www.instantactionpodcast.com. Send me an email, instantactionshow at gmail.com. Feel free to send any chicken soup recipes or anything else there. Uh, I will certainly use them. Call me, leave me a voicemail, 347-4VM4PS2, or that's 347-486-4772. The show's Twitter is at InstActPodcast, and my personal Twitter is at the Derringer. So in closing, if you've enjoyed the show, please leave me a review on your podcast listening avenue of choice whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere else. Also, feel free to tell your friends and outfit mates about the show. And finally, thanks for listening, and keep spamming that Join Combat, formerly known as Instant Action Button.